Perfect. My mom was incredibly happy when we play a video and it works and it goes well. So everybody, everybody heard the sound on that. Um, so that will just give you a real visual snippet of what Twitch is. Um, but for those of you who are sitting there who are still going, OK, what is it? Um, let me give you a brief overview. Um, so Twitch is a service uh, where creators come every month to stream hours on end about their passions and their interests. And it can be anything from gaming uh, to sports uh, to music. They stream them to like-minded people. They're looking for like-minded people and they're building these communities along the way. And it really is the streamers and the uh, com these communities which have been created on Twitch, which have seen Twitch emerge from what was once seen as a, a live stream gaming service into this a live, interactive, highly vibrant and highly engaged community with a diverse range of content, uh, which is now being streamed all over Twitch. Okay, the slide moves, brilliant, perfect. So some big data for you. Um, just looking at Twitch really in numbers and just to give you an idea of the size of Twitch. I mean, if we look at the numbers in 2020, we had over 1 trillion minutes uh, streamed on Twitch. We have around 7 million unique streamers going live every month. And we have around 30 million um, average daily visitors. And if we're just looking at the growth, and I'm just going to move everybody on my screen, so I'm blocking my own slides here. If we just look at the growth of Twitch as well, if we compare hours watched in 2019 versus hours watched in 2020, we can see we're almost doubling size. We've gone from 10 billion hours watched up to 18 billion hours watched in 2020. And this has been driven by a number of things. Um, live streaming has been growing for years. We've seen a lot of people, particularly in the younger end of the millennial age groups and kind of the gen z and the soon to be coming gen alpha for them live streaming is just becoming the norm it's the way they consume content it's the their preferred format of content over to traditional tv or traditional video so live streaming has been on, on a trajectory of growth for a number of years now what happened obviously in 2020 is lots more people started spending time online uh, because of the various restrictions which happened around the world. So what we've seen on Twitch is essentially is an acceleration of the adoption of live streaming. So the audiences have grown. Uh, the amount of content being consumed on Twitch has obviously grown with that in 2020. And it's really, really interesting if we look at the numbers in 2021 and compare hours watched month over month and compare them back to the previous year, we're still maintaining that growth as well. So again, we've seen that huge acceleration uh, of the adoption of live streaming and the Twitch is continuing to grow behind that. Let's switch, let's switch to the next slide. Brilliant, perfect. And, and one of the reasons why Twitch has been growing so successfully is that kind of emergence from a live live stream gaming platform service into uh, a, a, a different areas of kind of content. So people are coming on Twitch to, because they're interested in arts. Arts and craft is absolutely huge on Twitch. So people are kind of streaming about that. People are interested in food. Um, sports is becoming very, very interesting on Twitch. We've had the Premier League streaming on Twitch in 2020 and people kind of immersing in content in a slightly different way and sports content. We have clubs on uh, Twitch now. So Arsenal FC are running a very, very successful channel on there. Um, also in the live event space as well, obviously, as live events and music got tailed back in 2020, we've seen a lot of it being transferred online. So people obviously having concerts on uh, Twitch or performing on Twitch. You would have seen in the VT video we had earlier John Legend uh, performing a song uh, on Twitch in 2020. And we, music is also a really, really interesting area as well because as well as the live performance, we've seen artists come into Twitch and then creating songs with their communities as well. So they're getting live feedback on songs as they're creating. So it's a new way of creating music. And all these wonderful areas are, are, are growing on Twitch, which is why it's now uh, continuing to grow and continue to attract a wide range of diverse audiences. 
So hopefully that will give you a really quick overview of what Twitch is and the content and the diverse range of interests which are on Twitch. But what I really wanted to talk to you today is about how the insights and measurement team are using, like I said, big data and small data to service the needs of clients. And I really want to talk to you about how we're setting up our insights and measurement team first as well, because as you could imagine, uh, with any organization which has uh, it almost doubled in size within kind of the space of 12 months in terms of the, the content or kind of some of the audiences which are coming to Twitch as well, um, the insights and measurement team really had to rethink about how we're there to kind of support the needs of our clients. What happened in 2020 is obviously we saw a lot of clients moving towards more online advertising, uh, which kind of obviously uh, directed a lot more advertising towards Twitch. Um, also, uh, clients really started to focus down on having a live streaming strategy or a gaming strategy as well. So what we saw on Twitch over, the, I suppose, the past kind of three or four years, but particularly over in 2020, different types of advertisers coming to work with Twitch who were not naturally sitting within the gaming sector or electronics sector. They're coming from areas kind of like uh, CPG brands, for example, coming in. Uh, fashion brands are kind of exploring Twitch because it's an area where they can where they have audiences which they can reach out to. So the insights and measurement team almost had to rethink about the specialisms which we need in the team and have enough specialisms in there to guide these brands when they want to come and work within the live streaming environment to ensure that when they're putting their media on Twitch or working with us in a creative capacity, they're getting the right messages to the audiences uh, in the right moment. So. How did we do this? So we newly formed a global insight team. I would officially say that the newly formed or restructured team is probably about kind of 18 months old now, maybe just under that. Um, and we brought in a team of kind of uh, insight experts uh, and with local country expertise. And what do we mean by this is we have our insight team dotted around the globe in different locations, which I'll go into de detail. So we can understand uh, the nuanced needs of live streaming and the clients. Uh, in lots of different regions in there. And also having that, that local angle on some of the, the data sets we use uh, uh, to, to help provide the insights. We also brought in experts and kind of people who would be experts at helping brands reach live streaming audiences. So different, uh, different types of expertise uh, within the team. Um, we've bolstered out a range of insight capabilities. And also what we're really using to help our advertising clients is this unique access we have to gaming and live streaming uh, audiences through our proprietary data sources. So that's our behavioral data, uh, which we can see what's happening on Twitch, but also some of our unique research panels as well. So like I said, our experts uh, are dotted all around the globe. Um, so we have teams in, in the Americas, looking after the Americas. So that's Canada, the US and South America. Uh, we have a team in London, really, really focused on supporting the, the EMEA region. And we have uh, insight experts in Singapore and Sydney as well. And they're there to support the APAC region in particular. And we're looking at kind of expanding this out. So we have people kind of coming into our team in kind of Paris later on in the year. Canada, they're going to be based in Canada uh, and also going to be based in Germany as well. And this is super, super important for us when we're looking at supporting advertisers around the world because we have those experts on the ground who are experts in like i said the local cultural nuances around live streaming and what's going on in live streaming what's specifically what's going on in gaming as well um, but also having experts on, on the ground who can work with both the big data sets or the little data sets which are very very unique to those regions now just going into the specialisms um it was really important for us to be able to help advertisers um, but recruit people in different specialisms and people who walk across different types of data sets, both small data sets and big data sets. So we have our primary research experts within the team who are very much focused on your classic research. So qualitative research, quantitative surveys, they do mobile diaries, they do ethnographies, all those wonderful areas which sit within the, the, the traditional primary research field. Um, we have lots more data and analytics experts within the team as well. And this really is one of the jewels in our crown because these are the teams which can really zero in on our first party data, look at the trends, what's going on within Twitch, look at the different behaviors, what content people are consuming, what games are kind of popular right now. 
but as well as looking at our first party data, they can kind of look at the third party data sources, which we have access to. But also this is the team which are kind of really zero focusing on automating our capabilities as well. One of the things which is really, really important to Twitch is making sure that we get the insights to the end users as fast as possible uh, with as low touch as possible as well. So once we're producing kind of our reporting set, sets or reporting stack, this will be the team there which kind of automates it and takes the humans out of the process, which again allows us to scale as a team. Um, client measurement experts within the team as well. So people who specialize in measuring advertising when it appears on Twitch. And we need specialists in this domain because there are there, these are the specialists who look at more traditional forms of measurement, uh, which you'd be familiar with for some of the third party vendors out there, the Cantars and kind of the Nielsen's of the world, et cetera. But also people who kind of specialize in creative diagnostics, so understanding what works, what doesn't work within, it, within a campaign. And also people within this team who can also help us design measurement. Uh, Twitch as an experience is very, very different to other media. It's uh, interactive. It has a community feel around there. We have streamers on there to, to talking about content, sponsored streams, etc. So we need people within the team who can design ways to kind of measure the different types of client uh, campaigns which appear on Twitch as well. Um, another interesting bow within our team is we've got cultural insight specialists dotted around the team as well. And this is super, super important for Twitch because Twitch as a service is very much on what I call the vanguard of media behaviors and trends at the moment. Um, a lot of the behaviors on Twitch are, even though it's becoming much more mainstream now, a lot of the behaviors are still kind of emerging. And having cultural insight experts in there who kind of understand different techniques like semiotics or AI semiotics now, which seems to be the sort of bigger buzzword around the kind of research, understanding where culture is going, understanding kind of what that means for Twitch, and then understanding how brands can best show up and relate within that culture is a super important lens and something which we need uh, within our Twitch team, our insights team. Um, another jewel in our crown is, like we were talking earlier, the unique access we have uh, to data. Um, now, the Twitch audiences are very, very, very hard to find in third party data sources. Um, we spent a lot of time in sort of previous years looking for these people in third party panels, but it's very, very hard to find them. And that's because they tend to be more on the side of kind of uh, technical. They tend to be kind of skewing towards those kind of younger age groups as well. Um, they tend to be quite affluent in some places as well. And all these all these audiences are really, really, really hard to find in third party sources. So we took the steps internally and we built our own panel of Twitch users because we have the relationships with the end users. And it's very, very easy for us to create these panels. Um, but what this panel actually gives us, it gives us the opportunity to use it for measuring so we can measure the performance of advertising. But we can also do deep dives into these audiences as well. So another way we can really help our clients is by jumping in and kind of asking questions uh, to our community. And what that gives them is very much a window into the live streaming world, generation Twitch, generation Z, et cetera, as well. So it's a really, really potent tool, uh, which we have in our, which we have in our, in our toolkit. Um, and also the panel is global. Uh, we have kind of panels in kind of the US, Brazil, Canada, the EU5, within the APAT region, we have Australia and Japan. And we also have Korea and Taiwan going live now, we're expanding more and more and more in 2021. So we can really have a really great insight to see what's happening within live streaming audiences uh, globally. So, that's enough of me talking about how we do it and how we set up. What I wanted to really do now for the last kind of 10 minutes of the session is just take you through some examples of some of the insights which we do and how we've helped, uh, helped our advertisers. So the first one I've actually been talking about a lot this year is our audience segmentation. Um, we did this kind of at the turn of the year. In fact, we've been segmenting our audiences all throughout the year, looking at kind of gaming audiences and non-gaming audiences within Twitch. And what we wanted to do is really kind of dispel perceptions of what people have of gamers and kind of who they are. You can see that a lot of brands or advertisers now know that they need to be working within gaming. Um, they know that you have highly engaged audiences within gaming. They know that live streaming is a place where they can, where they need to be. Um, but there's kind of, a, when you talk about gamers, there's a fear around these particular audiences. There's preconceived perceptions of who they are. A lot of people think of somebody sat in a basement, a young boy, 
playing Call of Duty in the dark, etc. But that's really not what gaming is about. So we did the segmentation to look across the different Twitch audiences and really start to educate the world about how diverse their interests are and how diverse actually gaming is uh, on Twitch as well. So on the screen here, you see an example of our segmentation. I've called out one of the segments on the screen. Um, but what I'll do, I'll just talk you through the kind of five different audience groups which we found on there. So we found five segments who are interested in gaming. The first one up is the creatives, who you can see on the screen right now. Um, what's really, really interesting about this group in particular is actually the reasons why they join Twitch is to make friends with people and kind of engage and chat with the streamers. So it's all about being social to them. And then this is very much reflected in the games that they play as well. So the games they tend to play tend to be like puzzle games or caregiving games or games where they can be a little bit more creative as well. So you think Among Us, you think Animal Crossing tend to be the games that these, that these people play in. And their interests are really, really wide. They love pets. They love cooking. Um, you know, they've got all sorts of different hobbies um, beyond which, which kind of sit not just in gaming, uh, for example. And then even the way advertisers can really best reach this audience as well. Um, they really like campaigns where they can create within the campaign and they can kind of share their creation with their communities as well. So any campaigns that let them be involved, create and share really works well with this particular audience. Now, if you compare those to the audience, which are on that top left hand chart there to the right of whom we call them the strategists. They're very, very, very different audiences. They tend to be a, a lot older. They're skewing towards their kind of 30s and 40s in terms of their age group. They've been on Twitch for a long time. Uh, their gaming tends to be quite centered on solo gaming. So role playing games are really, really big for this audience. Um, and actually, again, their habits are quite wide. It's quite wide, sorry. They like kind of science. They like kind of uh, the news and, the, and those types of areas as well. Um, and reaching this audience is slightly different. They really love it when they see campaigns which have retro gaming references. So anything to play to that nostalgia around gaming is really important for the uh, for our strategists. Compare them to the competitors, which are our next audience along on that chart. They are highly competitive. They are much younger. They tend to be in their early 20s. They're highly competitive and they're on Twitch to both show off their skills and also learn from the best gamers on Twitch as well. So completely different motivations. But this audience is, they're really, really affluent. They love fashion. They love brands. Um, so there's so much more to them, again, to their gaming. And how you can really tap into these audiences is very different as well. Um, so for this particular audience, they're very influenced by the streams on Twitch, for example. So working with our streamers in some capacity will really work with this audiences. They're also super into esports. Um, so you, yeah, there's, uh, sponsorships around kind of esports on Twitch is also a great way of reaching these, uh, these audiences. Um, then we've got our entertainers. Again, a completely different audience. Again, actually, their goal is to become a streamer themselves on Twitch. They're very much about entertaining their crowd. They're very much about creating their communities around there. When we ask them what games they play, it's incredibly varied. They'll play whatever their audience asks them to play. So it's all about the performance for this particular type of audience. When we dive into their interests, you see, again, fashion comes up really, really high. They love beauty. Um, they love karaoke. They're probably one of our most extroverted audiences, which we see on Twitch. And again, reaching them, you, you can, they're really tuned into some of the campaigns which are working with the, the creators on Twitch as well. So campaigns which are centered around creators and centered around their interests work really, really well for this audience. And then... Last but not least, our socialite audience on there are a really interesting audience on Twitch. They're the younger audiences and kind of around that kind of 18 to 20 mark, kind of slightly, slightly younger. Um, but this is the generation which has grown up with live streaming, grown up with Twitch. Twitch offers them everything they need because on Twitch is where they find their friends. It's where they interact with their friends. They'll interact with their friends both on Twitch. They'll interact with them in real life. Sometimes they'll just have kind of online friends, which they met on Twitch. And it's also the way that they just stream content. Uh, like I said, I said earlier, it's very much their preferred way of watching content over other forms. Um, so Twitch has pretty much gone on the, on the main screen or kind of on the computer screen or whatever it is, but it's just the way they, they consume content. And again, the, the, the way you kind of tap into them as an advertiser, um, more immersive uh, campaigns, which they can kind of be a bit little, uh, that they can be part of. Um, really kind of resonates with this audience. But 
So those are kind of the five audiences which we found within our segmentation. As you can see, they're all very, very, very different and there's different ways of tapping into them. But the one thing which we talk about to advertisers is their interests are so broad, their hobbies are so broad. You've got fashion in there, you've got beauty, you've got, they're into the, like, the latest electronics, they're into the latest tech. Um, there's so much more to them than being just gamers. So it doesn't matter whether you're working with us in a media capacity or you're working with us in a more creative capacity. We have an audience on there which advertisers can, can reach and an audience in there uh, for, for, for our different advertisers' products. Just closing the loop, I suppose, on kind of using uh, big data and small data. Obviously, this is a classic example of using small data uh, to understand audiences and connect advertisers uh, with the Twitch audiences. But we also learned a lot about these audiences. We learned about the games they like to play. We learned about the content they, that they love to consume as well. So then we were able to kind of look at our bigger data set and being able to help advertisers reach those audiences based on those different uh, profile information, which we know about these as well. So connecting big data and little data was something we did uh, within this project. So a couple of minutes left, so I'll be very, very quick on these. Um, another way that we use, uh, another tool that we use to help advertisers work on Twitch is our pre-test and our creative testing suite. Now we have lots of measurement tools, like, like I said, a lot of them within the standard kind of brand lifter arena, uh, reach arena, sales lift, those type of things we have in different capacities around the world. Um, but one of the things which we brought out this year is creative testing or pre-testing. And this really is to allow advertisers to be able to test their video formats amongst our RBG RPG panelists as a way of seeing what's going to work best amongst the Twitch audiences. Like I said, a lot of these brands are making their first steps into gaming or into live streaming, and they want to see what works uh, in terms of advertising. And this is a great tool. Uh, for a client kind of earlier this year, we tested five different formats for them. And what we were able to tell them was, okay, format A works best in this country, and format B works best in this other uh, country as well. So... It's a really good way of seeing what fits. Um, you can see if videos work better in Japan versus they, whether they work better in kind of Europe, or in Spain, for example. Um, it's also a good way of getting some creative diagnostic feedback so we can say what's really working within the advertising and what's not working within the advertising. I think most importantly as well, for some brands where they're not sure whether their creative is going to work or fit amongst the audiences or they're worried about any negative feedback around it, it's a good way of just testing content amongst a smaller audience first. Um, and then seeing if there are any kind of flags around the content at all or anything which might be tweaked or might uh, entice a negative reaction as well. So it's a good it's a good kind of methodology for us, which we've been rolling out for our advertisers. But again, connecting that to bigger data sets or AI, we're looking at kind of expanding that out in kind of Q4. So we're now looking at as well as kind of response through questions to advertising. We're looking at response through kind of attention. So eye tracking on screen emotional responses as well to advertising to see if we can understand what type of creative is best at driving high attention or what drives high attention uh, with, with particular types of creative or what gets the, the preferred emotional response. About it and AI. Being able to create a we give the best of the uh, the most desired um across. and another way which we're kind of thinking of into the big data and using all the tools. All right and we should just close i think the real like i said first party data friends on twitch and the behaviors on twitch um, yes, it, it's, it's very easy to look at um, the hours consumed and, uh, and kind of the, the or kind of the games they consume. So, but the fact Vanguard and on the cut right now, so you can really see what are the emerging trends in culture just by, let me give you two quick examples of that. Example, really, anybody remembers the Net Queen's Gambit? I don't know how widely that went. Um, I didn't actually see this, but I know it's about chess. When the, it was a really, really big show on Netflix, and what we saw, first party data set, is around the time of the show, we could see that 
there was an increase in the amount of people wanting to play chess or learn about chess. And we could see that within our data on, uh, on our data on Twitch. So we could see that emerging trend or that emerging interest in the world uh, around chess. Also last year as well, there was a big spike in people obviously doing social gaming. So we could see like the rise and the takeover of titles like Among Us, which was really, really popular uh, during the pandemic as well. So this is a really, really important tool for us. And it helps us not only help advertisers understand where to advertise on Twitch or what would be kind of the best channels, the best people to kind of work with, but also helps us inform them about changes in culture and how they can kind of line up behind that as well. So a really, really, really interesting data set for us. And that for me is finished. And it looks like I finished just on time. Um, thank you all for listening today. What I will say is if you want to know more about Twitch and want to know more about advertising on Twitch, what I would recommend is you reach out to your local uh, Twitch advertising rep representative. If you do not know who your local Twitch advertising representative is, please feel free to reach out to myself. Um, if you want to know about, more about Twitch Insights or know more about the audiences, again, please feel free to reach out to myself. I'm more than happy to chat about Twitch Insights or audiences anytime you like. And what would really be helpful, just to kind of close off this session today, is we've got a survey form there. Uh, we'd love to get some feedback and your thoughts, what you thought of the session. I'll just help us improve me being a data person. Loves to see data about a session, loves to see some feedback. All you need to do is scan the QR code on there uh, and that should take you to a survey as well. So thank you very much for listening. So we got a couple questions for you from the audience. So first one is from Julia. She asked about Twitch. Is this a good platform for B2B marketing? It's a good for B2B marketing. It depends on which kind of audiences you're trying to reach. I'd have to understand more about your audiences and who you're who you're trying to reach um, before I could really, really, really kind of answer that. Yeah. Um, uh, what, what, what I would say, like I said, Twitch is has a broad range of audiences on there. There's a broad range of audience profiles on there. Um, so we do say that there's an audience out there for most advertisers, but it really just depends on who your target is. Fair enough. Fair enough. So, um, Julia, you can clarify if you want while I ask this other question. If not, we'll move on. Uh, Joyce asks, uh, are Twitch advertisements only for brands that are active on Twitch? Um, not sure if I fully understand the question. The brands that are kind of active on Twitch as Twitch as a service is open to kind of any advertiser who wants to kind of reach uh, uh, an audience well, and, and the particular audiences we have within live streaming as well. So it's not close to people who are just currently advertising on Twitch. I'm not sure if I 100% understand the question, but yes, if you, if you have a brand, you have a product, um, please reach out to us um, because there are advertising opportunities for all different types of advertisers. Perfect. Okay. Uh, makes sense. So, Paul, thank you very, very much. Appreciate you getting up so early. <laughs> no and, problem at uh, all. Have, have an amazing day. Lovely. Cheers. Thank you.